What's up, guys? I'm pretty excited today. Uh, yesterday, just before lunch, I just happened to go on my phone. And I normally don't check Instagram that regularly, but I just happened to go on Instagram and bam, what do I see? Freiburger posts a little short video about how he had bought General Mayhem back. Now, if you didn't know, he sold the car to the network and uh, they owned it. He bought it back and guess what he's going old school he's gonna pull the Hellcat motor out and he is gonna drop in uh, the 440 that he had in the car originally kind of go back to the roots of the, the the car the build so I'm pretty excited I'm pretty stoked about that now you know I know there's a lot of people out there they're gonna go why would you do that you have this high horsepower motor that you know this thing kicks ass and everything why would you slow the car down or you know go backwards and uh, you know, I got nothing wrong with their Gen Hemis. I think they're really cool engines. They make tons of power. They're awesome. They're awesome, awesome in every respect. But um, and and I would probably do a Hemi swap, but I'd probably do it in a pickup. For for me, I just like the old school big block Mopars. And I for a Charger, like I would never put a third gen in it. And to me, it's just got to have a big block. It's got to have that big distributor sticking out on the passenger side. You know, I love the look. I love the feel. I love the sound. Uh, big block Mopars are just badass motors and they belong in B bodies, but that's just me. Nothing negative towards anybody that's done a third gen swap. I mean, they're cool engines, like I said. Uh, it's just a me thing. And plus, the, the roots of the car, I mean, kind of like, you know, the whole, the whole premise of Roadkill is sort of like, you know, build a car on the cheap with the bare minimum things you got, you know, and I think for a lot of us, you know, dropping a Hellcat into a B-body is probably a stretch, you know, uh, I don't think a lot of us has got the kind of uh, budget to do something like that, but, and, you know, you know what the prices have done on these cars, they've got skyrocketed up, so it's like even hard just to buy one of these cars or get yourself one of these cars, it's not a rust bucket, so, um, kind of having the car go back to the roots I, I'm in total support of it I think it's awesome I can't wait to see what they do with the car and I can't wait to see you know videos of that thing you know throwing brodies and going around corners and just kicking ass again the way it was um, you know how it, how I think we all you know dove into roadkill and loved roadkill because of that car because you know that car kind of put roadkill on the map in my opinion and to me it's like the best episode but of course if you know me you know i'm tied to that car and so of course it's going to be my my favorite episode but at any rate so if you if you don't know me you know you're kind of new to it um just kind of a quick history on the car i used to own that car um I probably had about six or seven chargers at the time and that car has it had a big dent in the quarter panel just behind the door on the passenger side so and then I think there might be still remnants a little wrinkle of that dent on the top edge of the quarter panel if you're ever close enough to the car to check it out but um, I had put tons of studs in that car with a stud gun and knocked the dents out had a porter power on the inside putting pressure on it and stuff it was a ton of work, you know, and I, I'm no body expert or anything, but I did a pretty damn good job pulling that dent out of it. But when after I did, I was like, man, this car is a ton of work. And then I'm looking at it and it's like, it's missing so many parts, you know, and I'm asking myself, why am I working on this freaking car? I've got a bunch, I got all these other chargers and they're all in much better shape than this car. So that was when I decided that I was done with it and I was going to sell it. So I put it up for sale, and I think I started, I think my initial post was for 3000 bucks, you know, and I didn't get a whole lot of bites on the car. I know it sounds mind-boggling today, but, yeah, nobody really called on it. And then I dropped the price to 2800 and then I started getting a lot of calls on the car, but nobody ever came to look at the car. Nobody ever showed up with cash. It was just like, it was a lot of dreamers, people calling just telling me what they wanted to do with the car how they wanted to build the car and it's like you know wasting my time it's like I mean if I knew and I was talking to you at a car show that's fine but you know it's like dude you know are you gonna buy this thing or what you know nobody would nobody would make the commitment to come out and get the car so I think I dropped it to 26 you know um, and then you know at that point I'm like you know that's my asking price so what am I willing to take for the car 
I was willing to take 2400 pretty easily. And then I was like, even man, you know, because it was just, I wasn't getting any serious bites on the car. I was thinking if somebody offers me 22 for it, I'm going to take it. And, uh, and that's when Freiberger called me up and I can't remember if he offered the cylinder heads beforehand or if he came and looked at the car and then offered them. I just, I don't remember, but whatever it was, I was open to the idea. He's, he's like, I got brand new Mopar aluminum heads brand new in the box never been mounted on an engine or anything and i thought man that sounds pretty cool i looked it up on the internet and they were going for about 2200 bucks at the time or so which was steeper than what edelbrock rpm heads were going for which they're flow wise and everything numbers wise they're pretty much equivalent heads but you know it's like how cool is it the end of the head has got mopar engraved on it stuff you know the mopar amp so I said, yeah, I'd be open to it, you know. So anyway, he came and looked at the car. This was around 2008, 2009. And um, he was telling me about how he, he would like to build the car. He wanted, because there were so many parts missing on the car, he was thinking that he would clone it into a NASCAR, um, a NASCAR clone and just leave it pretty much gutted. And I thought, man, that sounds pretty badass. And my wife and I had just gone, I think just prior to that, um, we went to the Mopars at the Strip in Las Vegas, and Steve Strope was there, and they were working on a, a 73 or 4 Duster that was painted blue, bitching car. It was like a giveaway, a sweepstakes car, and um, they were finishing it up actually at the show, and then at the end of the show, it was going to get, you know, um, raffled to somebody. So we're checking out the car. It's pretty awesome. You know, red line gauges was in there. They were doing the dash and stuff, and all these guys were working on the car and the brakes and everything. And then um, Steve Strope pulled us aside. I mean, what a cool guy. The guy is just, he's very approachable, very cool to talk to. Um, it, his, uh, his shop's called Pure Vision. Um, anyway, he's like, oh, you, got, you guys got to check this out. And he shows us this rendering of a 68 Dodge Charger that's white and it's got a red stripe on it. And the thing looked killer, badass. He's like, don't tell anybody I told you or showed you these pictures. But that was the car that he was going to be building at the time, which it's been built since then. And I think it's even been on eBay recently or some auction. Um, super cool car. So that's what I had in my head when Freiberger said that he wanted to build a NASCAR clone. So that's what I was kind of thinking he would build. you know. And, of course, time goes by. And... Uh, I had met this friend, a friend of mine, uh, Anthony Spriggs on Car Domain. When we were bullshitting. He's a he's a Charger guy too, and uh, I can't remember when this was. You know, it it was years later. He says, "Hey, I think uh, I think your Charger's on TV or or on this show called Roadkill." And I'm like, "What?" And so I looked it up on YouTube, and sure enough, boom, there it is. This Roadkill episode, and it's got. The 68 Charger that I had uh, I had traded to Freiberger for the cylinder heads, and um, I was like, "Wow, you know, I mean, how often? All of us have bought and sold cars, right? And then the guy that buys the car from you does something different to it, probably paints it or restores it, and your the tie to that car used to being yours is like gone, and you never, if you saw the car at a car show, you'd never know because it looks totally different, right? You know, unless you're communicating with the guy." But um, here was the car that left my yard, and it looked exactly how it looked when it left my yard, which was just like, you know, mind mind blowing. So, and of course, like the most awesome episode ever, you know. Anyhow, so when I had had the car and I had knocked that quarter panel out, you know, I primered it to get to seal up the metal and stuff, and then the car was just not very presentable. It was originally red it had blue painted on it it had primer spot it was just like all over the place it looked ugly and um and it was missing the whole front clip on the car too and so to make it a little more presentable i took some rattle can black paint and primer and i sprayed the whole car um and looking at it was like it still didn't look like a very good car because it still looked incomplete so I had had a, another 68 Charger that was pretty rusty, had a rusty roof, rusty trunk floor, but good frame rails and floors. Anyway, I had sold that car off and I kept the fender off of it. The red, it was a red car. So I threw that on the Charger. And then this car back here, this is my dad's 68 Dodge Charger, which um, 
I can remember as a kid riding with my parents to the boneyard and waiting in the car. I think we were in the van, actually, or a pickup truck uh, with my mom while my dad went into the boneyard. And he came out because when he bought this car, the previous owner cut a hole in the hood and put one of those plastic snorkel hood scoops, you know, very typical of the 70s which I thought looked really cool, but he didn't like it. He wanted a flat hood. So we went to the boneyard and got a replacement hood. And I remember him saying there was three chargers in there at the time, which it boggles the mind that that was even possible, but it was. So anyway, he put that hood that's on the car now, and the hood with the hole in it got, you know, shelved. And so I had asked my dad if I, because as a kid, man, my goal in life was to own a second gen charger. That was like all I ever wanted. And so I asked if I can have the hood and he said, yeah, the the hood scoop got cracked and broken. It was plastic and dry rotted and stuff, but um, I held onto the hood forever. So here's this charger that looks like hell that I just black primered and painted uh, rattle canned with a red fender. And so I grabbed that hood. I thought, you know, I'm never going to use this hood because, you know, I'm kind of being older. I'd rather have a hood without a hole in it and if I wanted a hood I'd probably get a glass hood with a six-pack scoop on it or something so I didn't think I'd ever use the hood so I threw the hood on that car Um, so that hood that's on General Mayhem is original to this car which kind of ties the two together and what I want to do is because the Tucson uh, duct tape drags that are coming up in October that uh, Freiberger had previously announced. I'm sure that General Mayhem is going to be there for that. So I want to make sure that this car is there also. I think it'd be totally awesome if we can, man, it'd be even more awesome if we can go down the track side by side, but at a minimum, be able to park this car next to his car, just, just to kind of like tie the two stories together, you know, and have the aluminum heads that I got from Freiberger for General Mayhem, put them on this car, and then general mayhem has the hood from this car i think it'd be pretty awesome so uh that's what i'm going to shoot for so everything that i had planned you know i i i'm going to push aside to move this project to the forefront i was kind of holding out on this car because i know that it's going to generate a lot of interest just being a charger and um it was sort of my ace in the hole all this stuff that I've done on YouTube up until now has been kind of just to learn and kind of figure things out. So I'm trying to make the videos better and, and, and the content better and trying to learn how to talk and be on camera better and all that stuff, um, which I think has been pretty good. But I was hoping to get a little more subscribers um, before I brought the charger and dropped it on everybody, you know. Uh, but because of all this stuff going on with General Mayhem, I I think it's the opportunity of a lifetime and I think it would be super cool to be able to have this car there at tucson in october so i'm gonna do everything i can to get this thing rolling um i'm pretty excited about it and hoping you guys uh follow along and share um let your your friends know about it and follow along as well um so that's where we're at i'm gonna do another video kind of telling the story on this car and um you know that should be coming up pretty soon and and then of course there's going to be videos to follow that have everything to do with getting this car back up and running and ready for tucson arizona so all right guys um one last thing my buddy chris makes t-shirts as you can see he makes some really cool mopar shirts um he's on teespring his his clothing line it's called uh straight line clothing so if you can check him out if you're into if you're looking for some mopar shirt please go check him out and um support him by buying some shirts and uh, of course if you know me you know I think a lot of people already know all this story about General Mayhem and stuff through Talking Mopars my buddy Chris Albrecht he he's the host of Talking Mopars super cool dude super cool show I love the stories I love you know all the stories people write in and call in or uh, and tell their own personal stories on their cars and you know all his content there is pretty awesome Uh, another friend Matt Monroe also has a podcast uh, called Matt Fro Monroe, um, and they're kind of like in general car stuff, but Matt actually has a 71 Duster he's doing a third gen Hemi swap on, so he does a lot of cool stuff there. You can look him up on YouTube as well. He's called Big Block Garage, uh, and then my friend uh, Blake Anderman, he does 
a lot of third gen hemi swaps so if you're into that thing uh, go check him out on uh, diyhemi.com or look him up diy hemi on youtube tons of videos on how to do a hemi swap he makes harnesses and stuff like that to make the job easy so uh, if you're thinking about doing that or considering it go check him out um, so I also have some some YouTube buddies that we all kind of uh, talk and and try to you know give each other advice and support and ideas on doing some on doing YouTube videos and stuff. So uh, I usually try to throw one of them in on my video. So at some point here, you're gonna see you know some text that says, "Hey, go check out my buddy," blah blah blah. And uh, you know I I don't know who I'll throw on there yet as I'm recording this. So, <laughs> but uh, go check him out. You know, they're all really cool dudes. Um, so that's it, guys. Until the next video, we'll see you later.